Good morning, everybody. Good morning. A very warm welcome to those of you who are here this morning in the flesh. Warm welcome to those of you who are going to meet us on Zoom or who catch up with us later on the internet. Especially warm welcome to people who are visiting us today. You are very welcome in this church. Also, we are welcoming the Reverend Dr. Alex Yesudas. He is from the Methodist Circuit. He's one of the ministers there with responsibility around the Birkenshaw area. I'm sure he'll fill you in more. It's his first visit, but we're looking forward to hearing what you have to say. You're very welcome. The notices, as usual, are as they are on the sheet, but just to give you a heads up on one or two of them, because you do need to make a special note. If you're a fan of Filey, then this is your day, because a trip is coming up to Filey with a Tuesday tonic group. Uh, a bus has been booked. The details are on here. But if you want to go, it's open to anybody, at all anybody. If you want to go, you just need to give Joe your name today so the coach that, of the right size can be booked. And the other thing is the Heritage Week, which is coming up in, at the beginning of September. Um, we need some volunteers uh, for our slot, whenever that is, uh, I think, yeah, Saturday the 9th, 10 to 1. So we need two volunteers for that. So if you're available, again, I think if you give your names to Joe. Oh, there are more, there's more than one slot. So it's two volunteers per turn. The other notice is the lunch club. Again, you must sign up if you want to come. And, uh, of course, there is a concert with David Hall and Friends and Messy Church. I think that's covered all of them. So, those are... We can see Messy Church and a lot of things in the way. All right. Right, so ignore that. If, you can still have a picnic if you like, I'm sure, in Cronus Park, but you'll be on your own. <laughs> <laughs> so, those are our notices. I said, please take the sheet home, pin it to your fridge. We'll now join together and say our growth prayer. God of mission, who alone brings growth to your church, send your Holy Spirit to give vision to our planning, wisdom to our actions, joy to our worship, and power to our witness. Help our church to grow in numbers, in spiritual commitment to you, and in service to our local community, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. And finally, it's family time. Does anybody have anything they want to say? I'm just scanning around, I'll come. Looking around here. No hands. Right, I'll do George first, and then I'll do you. Okay, George, what are you going to tell me today? Edda's birthday soon. Oh, that's oh. Okay, so you can have another go next week. Uh, I, did, I got this. Uh, we had just saw this time that long ago. Right. I'm not going to ask any more questions about dinosaurs. I was getting to strife with this. <laughs> so, where did you get that from? Well, I saw it in Hamleys in London, uh, but uh, it was. Twenty-eight pounds. So when we ordered it on the phone, I think that's a good plan at twenty-eight pounds. Yeah, not to self. Oh, and sorry, quickly. Uh, that'll do. That'll do. You sure? Saying that it wasn't right when you said anyone could go to filing because I can't. Because that's when I'm going back to school. Oh, he's got to go back to school. When is it you go back? Next Monday. All oh, right, we'll, we'll cover that in family time next week then. Good morning, everybody. Um, last week I told you that Muriel Hemingway was in hospital. Um, she's been transferred to Dewsbury Hospital. But unfortunately, they've got COVID on the ward they've sent her to. So um, Rosemary and uh, Vivian are unable to visit. So if you keep the family in your prayers, please, that would be lovely. And a few weeks ago, I told you that Ethel Marriott had become a great grandma to Phoebe. 
Well, our second granddaughter has had a little boy, Caleb. So, um, they're full of babies. <laughs> Thank you very much, everybody. I now hand over to you, Alex, and look forward to what you've got to say. Good morning, everyone. Good morning. It's very lovely to see you all. Um, the very first time I'm visiting this church and taking this service. Uh, we moved to the circuit three years ago from Blackpool, and this is my second appointment in the British Methodist Church. I'm originally from India, belong to the Church of South India. Uh, so anyway, I'm so glad that I'll be able to meet you first time because of this COVID and everything. I think it took a long time to come and to preach uh, and to take this service. Uh, that's all about me as initially and uh, looking forward to uh, worship with you. And a very warm welcome to this service. <clears throat> Call to worship, please. Lord, we come before you this day as part of the human family. Inspire us, O oh God, open our hearts. We come in our diversity to catch your vision of unity. Inspire us, O God, open our hearts. We come to hear your challenging word of truth. Inspire us, O oh God, open our ears. We come to thank you for your gifts of beauty, joy, and hope. O God of love, vision and truth, we praise your blessed name. Amen. Our opening hymn is hymn number 152 in the singing of the faith. This is the day, this is the day that the Lord has made. This is the day that the Lord has made, that the Lord has made. We will rejoice, we will rejoice and be glad in it, and be glad in it. This is the day that the Lord has made. We will rejoice and be glad in it. This is the day, this is the day that the Lord has made. This is the day, this is the day that we rose again, when we rose again, we will rejoice. Let us pray. Creator God, maker of all that is, we draw near and enter your holiness. Your presence welcomes us. Your love enfolds us and your power 
sustains us. Jesus Christ, Son of God, Son of Man, we draw near and come to you. Your example challenges us. Your love forgives us. And your peace restores us. Holy Spirit, God around and within us, we draw near, united by your power. You lift our hearts in joyfulness. You guide our ways in obedience. Your love enriches our love. Lord, we bring our love to you. Accept our worship, Lord. Accept our praise. Accept our dedication. For your holy name's sake, Amen. Now a prayer of confession. Lord, we are sorry. We are sorry that we keep your ways and your love to ourselves. That we do not challenge others when they stray away from your ways. That we do not act as stewards for your world in our community. For we fail to condemn what is wrong. Forgive us and give us wisdom, strength and courage to be faithful guardians of your way. This we ask in the gracious name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. Now we will have our Bible readings. Prayers of Adoration, Philippians 1, 27 to 30, life worthy of the gospel. Whatever happens, conduct yourselves in a manner worthy of the gospel of Christ. Then, whether I come to see you or only hear about you in my absence, I will know that you stand firm in the one spirit, striving together as one for the faith of the gospel, without being frightened in any way by those who oppose you. This is a sign to them, and they will be destroyed, but that you will be saved, and that by God. For it has been granted to you on behalf of Christ, not only to believe in him, but also to suffer for him, since you are going through the same struggle you saw I had and now hear that I still have. And the second reading is from John 17, 20 to 23. Jesus prays for all believers. <clears throat> My prayer is not for them alone. I pray also for those who will believe in me through their message, that all of them may be one. Father, just as you are in me and I am in you, May they also be in us, so that the world may believe that you have sent me. I have given them the glory that you gave me, that they may be one as we are one, I in them and you in me, 
so that they may be brought to complete unity. Then the world will know that you sent me and have loved them even as you have loved me. Thanks be to God. We sing again, hymn number 103, God is love, let heaven adore him, hymn number 103. Please be seated. So, good morning, children. I can see a couple of children here. Good morning. And uh, may I ask you, do you enjoy working jigsaw puzzles? Jigsaw, do you like? Right. And what about you? You like? Right. Jigsaw puzzles can be a lot of fun, isn't it? lot of fun. <laughs> See, um, there are a lot of pieces here and, uh, oh, it's going to be messy here. So, 
I will take only very few here. All right. The pieces of this puzzle are in many different sizes and shapes, okay, and in different colors. If you look at one of this uh, puzzle, you don't get very, very much of the big picture. So the pieces are not very important by themselves. But when they are all joined together and become one, they show the total picture. This jigsaw puzzle can teach us an important lesson about the church. The church is made up of many individual members, like the pieces of this puzzle. The members of a church come in different age, ages, dif from different backgrounds. But we are all one in Christ. The lesson just we heard from John's Gospel, chapter 17, Jesus himself prayed that the church would be one so that the world would see God love in us. For example, verses 22 and 23 says, I have given them the glory that you gave me, that they may be one as we are one. So you and I are part of this big picture. Jesus wants us to love one another, help one another, support one another, and serve one another. When we do that, we become one. Just as Jesus prayed, we would be. And when we are one, the world can see the big picture, the great picture of God's love in us. But unfortunately, just as it is sometimes difficult to put all the pieces of a jigsaw puzzle together, the individuals of a family or a church sometimes have a hard time being one with each other. You may probably hear people in church saying things like, I don't like the songs we sing or the preacher preaches too long. Yeah, that's correct. <laughs> I not even started preaching. <laughs> when we say things like that and concentrate on our own likes and dislikes, we are no longer being one. We are like the individual pieces of the puzzle. The world cannot see God's love in us. They don't get the whole picture. So when we are one, bound together by God's love, the world will see God's love through us. May God bless us with these words. Amen. Let us pray. Dear Father, help us to be one so that the world may see your love in us. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Our next hymn is hymn number 443. Come, let us sing of a wonderful love. Thank you. Yes. 
the Savior this gospel to tell. Joyfully came, came with the helpless son, helpless to dwell, sharing the sorrow. So all yours, O oh Lord, what we are and what we have, as a token of our love and gratitude, we place this money to you and to you for your ministry. Accept this gift and accept us as we are. Make us more generous and faithful in your service. This we ask in the gracious name of our Lord, and Savior Jesus Christ. Amen. Let us pray. <clears throat> Lord, be ever gracious to us. Let the ray of your light penetrate the darkness of our understanding. Give us confidence in the power of your gospel. Grant us clarity in understanding and in proclaiming the truths of your word. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. John chapter 17. Verses 21. Father, just as you are in me and I am in you, may they also be in us so that the world may believe that you have sent me.
Mo Phillips, the American comedian, narrates a beautiful story. Once I saw this guy on a bridge about to jump, I said, don't do it. He said, nobody loves me. I said, God loves you. Do you believe in God? He said, yes. I said, are you a Christian or a Jew? He said, a Christian. I said, me too. Protestant or Catholic? He said, Protestant. I said, me too. What denomination? He said, Baptist. I said, me too. Northern Baptist or Southern Baptist? <laughs> he said, Northern Baptist. I said, me too. Northern Conservative Baptist or Northern Liberal Baptist? He said, Northern Conservative Baptist. I said, what a small world. Me too. Now, Northern Conservative Baptist of Great Lakes Region or Northern Conservative Baptist of Eastern Region. He said, Northern Conservative Baptist of Great Lakes Region. I said, die, you heretic. And I pushed him over. <laughs> So this story illustrates, it's a beautiful illustration on the disunity in family, church, and the society. As we all know, our world is a fraction on various matters. John Wesley once said, I want the whole Christ for my savior, the whole Bible for my book. The whole church for my fellowship and the whole world for my mission field. St. Paul's letter to Christians at Philippi, our, our second reading, was written while Paul was in prison. Much of this letter is devoted to instruction about unity and humility within the Christian community in Philippi. Paul emphasizes that the Philippian Christians needed to be united in proclaiming the gospel in the, that particular Greek city. In this passage, Paul reminds them of their threefold foundations of Christian unity and two solutions for disunity. I want to share those things with you this morning. Threefold foundations of Christian unity. Firstly, Paul says in this letter, we must be united in purpose. We must be united in purpose. Verse 27. Live your life in a manner worthy of the gospel of Christ. Live your life in a manner worthy of the gospel of Christ. Groups succeed when the members agree on their purpose. Even an average team can win the championship if the players all work together. They, they are united in purpose. So Paul in this letter says, them, says them to be worthy of the gospel. He exhorted the Philippians to behave in such a way 
that credit come to the gospel instead of disc, disc, discredit. Secondly, he says, Paul, uh, second thing he emphasizes here is, is to, uh, he encourages them to uphold the gospel. Verse 27 again, the second part, stand firm in one spirit. The, the, that purpose should unite any congregation. So upholding the gospel involves both proclamation and demonstration. So united in purpose. Secondly, he says united in attitude. United in attitude. He called the Philippians to unite in spirit here. It does not refer to the Holy Spirit, but rather to open to their opinion or their view. He wanted them to be like early believers in Jerusalem who were of one heart and one soul in Acts of the Apostles chapter 4 verses 32. It refers not only to the unity of purpose but also the unity of heart. So united in attitude. Unfortunately, unfortunately, churches fail to achieve this unity. Charles Swindle tells a beautiful story of two declining congregations in a small village. After struggling to maintain their churches for several years, these two churches wanted to merge and form one strong congregation. Everyone agreed it was a good idea, but they couldn't accomplish their purpose. Why? What was the problem? They could not agree on how to recite the Lord's Prayer. One group wanted, forgive us our trespasses, while the other demanded forgive us our debts quite a symbol isn't it one group wanted forgive us our trespasses but the other church demanded forgive us our debts you know what happened next day the local newspaper reported next day that one church went back to its trespasses and the other returned to its debts so sadly, many congregations are like these two. The people may agree on the church's purpose, but they cannot agree on how to get it done. So united in attitude. And finally, united in action. United in action. Paul challenged the Philippians to united in purpose, attitude, and action. In fact, he exhorted them to Strive side by side, verse 28, side by side. This phrase comes from the Greek, Greek athletic stadium. In team sports, the member of a team have to cooperate and help each other in order to win that match. If they don't, they are sure to lose. St. Paul longed to see the church members working side by side to present the gospel to their city. Once a missionary told of, of a village in Africa where a little child wandered away from home and was lost in tall grass. The villagers searched all day but they could not find the child. The next morning, missionary asked them to form in a line. They formed a line, joined hands, and walked through the grass side by side. Soon they found the child, but the child was seriously injured. In her grief and agony, the mother cried, if only we had held hands sooner. Like the believers in Philippi, Christians today must join hearts 
and hands to uphold the gospel. So these are the threefold foundations of Christian unity. They are, there are two ways of being united. One is being frozen together and the other is being melted together. Here Paul suggests the second way, being melted together, being melted by the power of the Holy Spirit. To come back to these foundations or achieve the unity for which we are called, Paul again suggests two practical solutions to the church in this passage. What are they? One, don't live to make a good Im impression on others, verse of three. Don't live to make good impressions on others. In such a success-oriented society, it seems that everyone wants to impress others with their accomplishments. I have discovered that no matter how much money people make in this world, it's not enough because they spend it all trying to live up their status. But it is not just a financial matter that we want to impress people. We want people to be impressed with our accomplishments and with our sacrifices and so on. We want people to be impressed with everything we do. It's a, mat it's a necessary part of the sinful human nature. We, or we call it pride. We are so concerned about what others think of us. Paul suggests us to avoid that kind of attitude. Jesus certainly didn't live to impress others. We, have, we, we see a beautiful example of this in Luke chapter 4 verse 9 where the devil is tempting Jesus. We all know the story. Then the devil took him to Jerusalem to the highest point of the temple and, uh, and said, if you are the son of God, jump off. What would have been the point here? The temple was the place where the people gathered to worship. So there were huge crowds. If Jesus had jumped off and survived, it would have been a remarkable achievement in Jesus' ministry. Can I say it would have been impressive, but Jesus, though he had the opportunity to impress others, knew it was not the way of the Father. So don't try to impress others. And finally, Paul says in this passage, rather be interested in others. Verse 4. Be interested in others. Here we see the concept of teamwork. The church is not a one-person show. The kingdom of God is in, not about what you are doing or about what I am doing. It is about what we are doing together. We may all have some part to play, as I mentioned in my children's address. We are all important. We all, we all have something to do. We each have our own role and function in the body and we cannot just do our job and forget about everyone else. So Paul urges us to take an interest and a genuine interest in other people. This is this not only creates effective results, but it helps to promote unity in the church. So dear sisters and brothers in Christ, like the believers in Philippi, Christians, as Christians, we must join our hearts and hands to uphold the gospel. When we share a common purpose or display a common attitude and act in unison, the gospel will be upheld, people will be saved, and God will be glorified. Amen.
we sing again father i place into your hands hymn number 518 518 thank you <clears throat> that I've been through. Father, I place into your hands the way that I should go, for I know I always can trust you. Father, I place into your hands my friends and family. Father, I place into your hands the things that trouble me. Father, I place into your hands the person I should be. For I know I always can trust you. Father, we love to see face we love to hear your voice father we love to sing your praise and in your name rejoice father we love to walk with you and in your presence rest for i know we always can trust you Let us pray. When I say, Lord, in your mercy, please respond with the, hear our prayer. Lord, in your mercy, yeah. loving Father, the one true God, we bring before you our cares and concerns for the world, our community, and ourselves. We ask you to strengthen those who proclaim the gospel in dangerous places around the world. Their livelihoods, loved ones, and lives are threatened. Give them courage and hope when they see others come to faith. When prayers are answered and their trust in you is fulfilled, may we, in the safety of our comfortable lives, learn to see the opportunities to share your gospel and to do so with boldness and grace. Lord, in your mercy, we ask you to inspire and encourage those who lead this and all nations. May they lead with humility, without the need for greed, praise, to influence their decisions. 
We pray that barriers between people or nations will be broken now. We remember the situations in Russia and Ukraine, Israel and Palestine. We pray for ethnic minority groups, for all who are judged because of their race, color, or creed, especially this morning we remember the victims of racist attack in Florida yesterday. We remember at this time all refugees, all outcasts, and rejected people. May we learn to respect one another's cultures and differences. Lord, in your mercy, we give thanks for those whose lives touch ours in this church and beyond. Bind us together as a supportive community breaking down any barriers, listening to and acting upon the needs of others, caring for your creation, and encouraging those for whom life feels wasted or wasteful. We pray for those among friends and families who do not know you or whose faith has been shaken. Lord, in your mercy, we give thanks for all those who work or volunteer in caring profession, where in hospice or hospital, care home, food banks, or as street pastors. We ask you, Lord, to strengthen their healing hands as they bring comfort to those in distress. Inspire them to explore new ways to bring holiness to broken lives and courage when faced with the difficult issues. Lord, in your mercy, Lord, we pray for all children who are back to school or starting their formal education this week. Bless them, Lord, with your love and give your divine wisdom. We pray for the needs of those known to us who are grieving or suffering in any way. We pray for the mentally ill, for those battling with addiction and the suicidal. We pray for those waiting for hospital appointments, a diagnosis or an operation. Comfort those facing another day of pain. Help us to know what practical or private help we can give to meet their needs. Lord, in your mercy, we come unto you, your love and mercy, those who have recently died. We thank you for lives well lived and love shared. We pray for those who grieve with their passing, whether recently or at this time of year. Comfort them in your loving arms. In a moment of silence, let us bring before God our own personal needs and prayers.
Lord, in your mercy. Merciful Father, accept these prayers for the sake of your Son, our Savior Jesus Christ. Amen. Let's say it together as Christ has taught us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory, for ever and ever. Amen. Our closing hymn is hymn number 404, God's Spirit is in my heart. That kingdom of God has come And go tell everyone The news that that kingdom has come downtrodden free and go tell everyone the news that the kingdom of God has come and go tell everyone the news that God's kingdom has come can see and tell your friends God and free and go tell everyone that the kingdom of God has come and go tell everyone the news that the kingdom has come Let us pray. Lord, 
you were with us when we arrived and you have stayed with us here when we worshiped go with us now that we may be always in your presence and follow in your paths amen, amen. let's share the grace together the grace of our lord jesus christ the love of god and the fellowship of the holy spirit be with us all evermore amen